Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous. Hello. Hello, you are the... Hello. Bonsoir Afrique Média. Vous êtes les meilleurs. Oui, bonsoir monsieur. Je suis le TK. Bonsoir monsieur, Afrique Média. Je vous remercie pour tout ce que vous faites pour euh, l'avenir de l'Afrique. Vous êtes la seule chaîne. La seule chaîne. United Kingdom have issued a blunt warning over the risk of terror attacks in Nigeria with the U.S. Embassy in Abuja telling people to avoid or non-essential travel uh, movement. Following U.S. Embassy's uh, terror warning, the British High Commission also issued an advisory to its staff on movement while also announcing reduced services. According to the U.S. Embassy, uh, there was a long list of potential targets including government buildings, places of worship, schools, markets, shopping malls, hotels, bars, restaurants, athletic gatherings, transport terminals, law enforcement facilities and international organizations. The United States also said Abuja is at a special risk of being attacked and in a security notice asked uh, people to stay alert and avoid crowds to keep safe. The UK government for its part uh, warned that attacks could be indiscriminate and could affect uh, Western interests as well as places visited by tourists. Reports indicate that other European countries are reducing services and will be attending only two critical needs. The government of outgoing President Muhammad Buhari is facing increasing criticism for its failure to tackle the country's widespread insecurity with armed kidnapping gangs and militant groups unleashing violence. Back in July, more than 400 prisoners went missing after a prison break, uh, which Islamist militants claimed uh, responsibility for. At the time, Defense Minister Bashi Yamagashi told reporters that 64 jailed uh, jihadists had escaped from the prison. The latest alert uh, followed an intelligence uh, report in September about uh, possible attacks on military facilities in Nigeria. One of the targets was the Nigeria Army School of Artillery Kacha, which houses the country's uh, second largest ammunition dump after Ikeja cantonment. The report has said the terrorists planned to mop up enough firepower to stage a takeover of Abuja. What then could be the trigger of such an alert in a country that is just a few months away to holding elections? This is Views on the Continent. Stay with us. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us on this uh, very first edition for the week of uh, Views on the Continent, where we take a look uh, at what is happening on the continent. And uh, today, our focus is on uh, Nigeria. We revisit the security situation of the uh, country, and now the United States has uh, uh, sent out an alert that uh, there is going to be a, a terrorist attack in the country, uh, particularly in the capital, Abuja, and it has uh, also uh, sent out uh, travel restrictions to uh, its uh, citizens and others who would uh, have loved to travel to Nigeria or out of Nigeria and also asked people to restrict their movements especially to uh, uh, to, to, to public uh, gatherings to public places like malls, uh, like hospitals and other places uh, so uh, we are revisiting Nigeria's security situation why is such an alert coming uh, at a time when Nigeria will be holding, holding elections just a few months away that like in less than four months in February, Nigerians will be heading to the polls to elect a new government. Now the United States is saying that the country's capital could face a possible terrorist attack. We know when Nigeria has had has a history of uh, insecurity, kidnappings, uh, uh, abductions, and many others uh, that have been taking place in the country. And now this uh, latest development, uh, where does this put Nigeria? What is actually happening uh, to the West African state? Uh, so that's going to be a point of uh, discussion uh, this day. And for those of you who are joining us for the very first time, uh, this is an interactive uh, program where you can always call and have your say on the day's topic or any other issue that is uh, pertinent to the continent at this uh, point in time. And of course, uh, uh, when that time will come, our numbers will be put on the screen, our lines will be open so that you can share with us your uh, views of uh, what 
is currently happening in Nigeria and of course we have two resource persons this day to uh, take a look at this uh, critical situation in uh, Nigeria. Nigeria's uh, insecurity has been all over the news in uh, recent times and, and now this latest development is uh, has put uh, many Nigerians on the alert uh, and many are worried about the security of the country. What has the Muhammad Buari administration done to curb the insecurity in the country and today on the program uh, we shall be uh, uh, having uh, uh, Mr. Adrian Atem Ebakowa uh, he is a pan-Africanist as well as a political analyst uh, he, hello and thanks for joining us on the program special greetings to you Madam Florencia and to all the viewers of Afric Media and to my co-panelists uh, Mr. Ad Mobley, it's a pleasure to join you today in this views on the continent. Thank you very much. Mr. Ateme Baku for honoring our invitation this day. Yeah, we equally have uh, Dr. Arthur Mobley. He is a Pan-African uh, political and media analyst. Hello, sir, and thanks for joining us on the program this day. Good morning, and uh, thank you again for the uh, invitation and uh, also from the greeting from uh, Mr. Baku. So, likewise, greetings, all. All right, uh, thank you so much for being with us this afternoon. Now, uh, let's dive uh, straight away into the uh, subject matter of the day, the insecurity in, in Nigeria and what the United States is uh, saying about uh, possible terrorist attacks uh, in the country's uh, capital, Abuja. Now, let's begin with you, uh, uh, Mr. Atem Ebakowa. Uh, when you take a look at uh, Nigeria's uh, security situation, what, uh, how would you analyze the security situation in that country? And what has the uh, current administration, in your opinion, what do you think the current administration has done in handling this uh, situation? Uh, Madam Florencia, you see, the problem we have been facing in Africa is that we have been missing the priority and we have been missing the point and uh, the very essence why we go to vote a president. You see, until we Africans come to understand that Africa is at a point where we need to keep politics aside because politics and democracy has failed Africa and it has failed because we can no longer depend on our politicians, we can no longer depend on our leaders, and we can no longer depend on democracy because it has failed. So these are the issues that we are facing in Africa. So Buhari's, why? Because it did not come there to seek the all-inclusiveness of its citizens and all the other opposition political parties. What we need in Africa, we do not need politics, we do not need democracy, we need unity. That simply means that Buhari has failed in order to call other stake, uh, stakeholders and other heads of political parties so that they can come together and agree on a common consensus. Wherever there is democracy and poverty, it will lead to insecurity. And it is very, very complicated because the government cannot get the support of the community. Because when you are unable to even protect a community which you have sworn power to protect these people and you are unable to protect them, you cannot expect these kind of people to have collaboration with you because you cannot protect them. And these people are people that you have abandoned them in a state whereby they feel that they have been kept away out of the system because of bad politics that we are facing today in Africa. You cannot tell me that Buhari does not have... The issue here is that a goodwill is not there. And because the very essence why Buhari was getting through order to Mr. Bako, we hope to come back to you. Uh in the minutes that uh, follow. Now, uh, coming to you, uh, Dr. Mobley, uh, when you take a look at Nigeria and uh, the current administration in place and the security situation in the country, how would you analyze uh, the uh, security situation in uh, Nigeria from the time this current administration uh, took power uh, to date? And what do you think it has been doing to uh, uh, contain the uh, rising insecurity in the country? Uh, when, whenever Nigeria has a challenge, 
Africa has a challenge. Uh, whenever Africa has a challenge, the entire uh, African diaspora is challenged. And uh, this is a confrontation that I think that we have to uh, address from a Pan-African standpoint. Um, I think what is going on uh, in Nigeria follows on the tail of a chain of events around the world that uh, emanate and are connected to situations in Europe, but also the Caribbean, particularly with Haiti, and as well as Mali and uh, Ethiopia, and uh, the things that are going on uh, in Africa right now, there is a lot of consternation, there's a lot of awakening, and uh, Africans are on the move, and the world is going to react. We can control how the world will react to Africa through, as Mr. Abaku said, uh, unifying. Uh, unified stance is the best way to deal with uh, this kind of threat. And it is an organized threat. People believe uh, in some ways and to some degree that uh, these things just happen out of, uh, out of thin air. Uh, there's no such thing as a terrorist group that can operate uh, autonomously in a semi-secure area without some kind of support from the outside. The question becomes, where does the support come from uh, for these groups that operate uh, fairly uh, liquid and freely across uh, particularly the Sahara region and uh, a bit in the sub-Saharan region now? If we go back a few years ago, these things were not occurring. These groups did not uh, exist in Africa. They came into uh, their existence following the convulsions in Libya and the destabilization of that part of Africa and have filtered down into Africa along with those mercenaries that were sent into Libya to destroy the, uh, the government of uh, Muammar Gaddafi. So we have to understand that the organization points for these groups is not fantasy. And uh, we have to do an anatomy and uh, an analysis of, of where they came from and stay very close, pay very close attention to their movements, origins, funding for them, et cetera, et cetera. But Nigeria right now is center point. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, my heart certainly goes out to my friends in Nigeria. I know that uh, there's going to be a difficult uh, transition, but uh, Nigerians, I think, are up for it. I think the youth in Nigeria and uh, the populace in Nigeria, a very healthy population, uh, is ready to, 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 to confront and to uh, intelligently uh, uh, liquidate these challenges. Yeah, we have indications that Mr. Atame Bako is back. Uh, if Mr. Atame Bako is uh, back with us, uh, can you just uh, take us from where you ended? Yes, Madam Florenza, can you hear me? Yes, I can get you very well. Carry on. Yeah. So what, what I was talking about, the insecurity in Nigeria, is that when you have a, a nation that faces this level of insecurity, there are factors you need to put into account because majority of the experiences and testimonies we have gotten from the bandits, from the, 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 the armed robbers, and from all those uh, uh, armed groups we have in Nigeria that are causing all of this insecurity, they kept saying one thing, that the government has not complied to what they made as promise that they were going to do for their people. So... come back to realize people are, are out to destabilize Nigeria, it is because they have a government that has failed to meet up to its responsibility. It has not just been how many days the, uh, uh, the chief of security was, uh, was kidnapped in Nigeria. So if the chief security in Nigeria 
who works with the state can be kidnapped. What more a common man? So it keeps Nigeria in a very vulnerable position where we can all attest as Africans that what we need now in Africa, we do not need politicians. We need leaders that want to seek to unite their people. These are Nigerians. You cannot look at Nigerians per political parties, whether it's PDP, ADP, or what name you can call them. This is a game of politics in Nigeria that is killing Nigeria today. And you can also not tell me that when a baby is crying, and if the mother goes to pet that baby not to cry, it means that the mother knows why the baby is crying. If the government is unable to keep down these insecurities in Nigeria, it means that the government is fully aware what is the stake and what are the plights of these a bandits and all of these armed robbers. The government is aware because the government has not been able to meet to its responsibility as the father and as the head of the nation to give the kind of, uh, uh, how I call it, standard of living to your citizens whereby you do not need to agitate people to pick up arms because of hardship, because of poverty, because of hang hunger, because of bad medical care. When people are pushed to the wall, you leave them with no choice. This is what the bad politics today in Africa has done. So we as Africans must admit that those that had the vision and the ideology of Pan-Africanism, they were right. Because it offers a room to not only unite the African people, but to maintain them to pursue a common goal, which is in the interest of all African global diaspora and the Africans at base. So which simply means that the solution to Africa can only, be, can only come from Africans and can only be through Pan-Africanism. And each time we talk about Pan-Africanism, we are talking about the diaspora coming back to Africa and an Africa which is united. So all of this insecurity to have America to predict an attack in Abuja in the coming days and leaving what is happening today in Ukraine, I think that America itself is also missing the point because it seems as if America wants to prove to us that they concern more about Nigeria than what is happening today in Europe, which America is the one that caused that war that we are seeing today in Ukraine. So all I'm just simply trying to say here is that those bandits are not ghosts. They are not spirits. If you have studied, um, how would I call it, as a security agent, it's simple to track them, trace them, and apprehend them, if really you want to. Because when you are doing a, a car chase, the car does not run and enter heaven. The car runs and gets to somewhere. So if really you are willing to smoke out these bandits and to bring security to your people, you can apprehend them even where they are without having to destroy innocent lives, but actually get out away these bandits that are causing this insecurity. But because the government is aware of the plight of these people and they understand that the people have a legitimate cause, that makes the government unable to react. So all I'm just simply trying to say here is that what Nigeria needs as a next leader is not a politician. It's a Pan-Africanist who is willing to improve the life standard of all Nigerians. It doesn't matter which tribe you come from. It doesn't matter which religion you come from. As a matter of fact, when you come to a country like Central Africa, when the president who took over power, the incumbent president right now, when he got into power, he called all the 14 heads of the rebel group and had a meeting with them. He had a meeting with them. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Atemi Bako. Uh, thank you so much. If you're just joining us, this is Views on the Continent, and we're talking about uh, the uh, uh, security situation in uh, Nigeria. Now, uh, the United uh, States of America has uh, dished out an alert that uh, there is going to be a terrorist attack in the country uh, anytime soon or in the days that uh, follow. Uh, and uh, he, uh, the uh, United States uh, mentions most especially the uh, capital, uh, Buja. What is your take on this? Uh, why is this alert coming at this time? And why is such an alert uh, coming from a, a foreign country rather than the country's own intelligence uh, services? So what explains uh, this? What is the trigger of such an alert at uh, this time when the, country's, the country is just a few months away to holding uh, uh, general elections? We would like to hear from you. Our numbers are on the screen. You can call us, tell us what you think. And this program is uh, streaming live on Facebook. Uh, you can equally visit our Facebook page, Africa Media. 
and uh, drop a comment tell us what you think about the insecurity that is currently uh, wreaking havoc in uh, nigeria just to remind our televiewers that uh, in uh, uh, july uh, the uh, some prisoners escaped from uh, the uh, prison uh, in uh, kuja and now uh, the this alert coming from the united states what does all of this encompass for africa's uh, uh, most uh, populous uh, nation uh, so we'd like to hear from you you can always call us and tell us what you think uh, now let's uh, come back to you uh, dr mobley yeah uh, now i would like to find out from you why such an information uh, is it uh, do you find it uh, okay that such an information about a security alert is coming uh, from the united states and uh, not uh, the uh, country's own intelligence services does it mean that the united states is more informed about the uh, country's uh, problem rather than the country's own intelligence services very good question um i think destabilization is a device it's a tool we have to be very careful whenever uh destabilization announcements uh come into uh, any uh, existing situation uh, but we also have to pay attention to the origin. So in this case, you focus right on it. Uh, why is this coming from the U.S. versus the Nigerian security uh, apparatus, the state of Nigeria? Why don't they know what's going on in their own country? And quite possibly uh, that information is flowing back and forth between Abuja and uh, Washington. But if that is the case, then that points to a, a more particular and more um, more uh, interesting uh, challenge and maybe a sinister problem at, at, in, in, in the making. Um, the U.S. is the champion of destabilization. It is a country that is known to destabilize other governments, doing it covertly, uh, sometimes overtly. I again mentioned uh, Haiti uh, not too long ago, and uh, Haitians uh, are, I think, a, a microcosmic reflection of the state of what the West, and particularly the United States, particularly Washington and London, would like to project on the entire African continent. Destabilization is the ideal circumstance for maximizing exploitation. When a country is disjointed, it is destabilized, it is in a state of internal conflict, that is when uh, things can happen that take all pertinent uh, facets of government operations, elections out of the hands of local people and throws it to the international community. So the international community simply sends in uh, UN troops or they send in their uh, mercenary forces or they uh, send in regular troops. And I mean, these things are not uh, new. Uh, this, is, this is not something that uh, has uh, not been seen before in Africa and in other places in the world. It's standard operating procedure. So we as African people, intelligent Pan-African people around the world, have to call these things for what they are. They are deliberate efforts to destabilize countries, to create an atmosphere where external control can freely happen. And uh, that's what we're facing in Nigeria. There is an effort now to clamp down and grab the heart of Africa, which is Nigeria, it's the most populous country uh, on the continent, and it is central to what happens in the rest of uh, in the rest of Africa. So if they can exact this control uh, that they are attempting to exact by using mercenary forces, by using terrorist jihadist um, uh, front uh, operations, then we are um, certainly. Uh, in for a, uh, a, a probably a, a rough ride uh, in the short term, but I think a very important uh, developmental opportunity long term because Africans have to be smart. We have to watch and be vigilant. 
All right. Now, Doctor, do you think uh, this uh, alert is uh, related to the country's upcoming elections? Uh, now, you talk about uh, this move being some kind of destabilization. We know Nigerians are heading to the polls in uh, February 2023. That's, that is less than five months from now. Do you think this has any relation with the elec uh, elections? Well, timing is everything, as they say. Um, and this is, uh, you know, obviously uh, peculiar uh, to most people. But I think you uh, put your finger on something that uh, Nigerians have to take into consideration. Don't allow uh, this call. It, it, it's essentially a call for destabilization in, in uh, that part of Africa. Uh, don't allow that to disrupt uh, those Pan-African activities, those activities of unification that you are currently seeing in Africa. What is happening in Mali is effective to what is happening in Nigeria. I don't care what the border situation is and how uh, Africa has been carved up. When Africans see someone who, uh, or, or a group of people in a neighboring state exercise and do things that are uh, progressive and that are ground changing, then that reverberation is felt in those countries as well. People react and the governments feel that tension. If they feel that there is tension uh, on the ground, then they are going to move to destabilize those organizational efforts. That's all this is. Uh, this isn't new. Again, we've watched this over the last 70 years, and uh, it's almost like clockwork. These people have no creativity when it comes to trying to uh, implement what they are trying to, uh, to, to form in in Africa. Destabilization is their standard operating procedure. This is what they do. And uh, I think African people just need to be uh, be, be vigilant about it and uh, understand that uh, these people are coming and uh, we, we, we simply block these efforts and, and move on. But that has to be something that is consciously done in unity. And I think Africans are starting to evolve to a point where we can operate and be unified across state lines. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uh, Mabli. Uh, coming back to you, Mr. Atame Bako, uh, let's uh, uh, revisit uh, this uh, question uh, about uh, this kind of information, this kind of alert coming from the United States of America. Why is the United States the one dishing out such an alert when Nigeria has an intelligence service, has its own uh, uh, security operations put in place that can uh, foresee such a situation and inform its citizens? But why is it that it is the United States that is talking about uh, possible terrorist attacks in the country, especially the capital Abuja. That's that's an very that's a very important question, and I was just about to recap back that same question you asked, uh, Mr. Mobley. You see, there can only be two reasons: either there is a security intelligence in Nigeria that is supplying intelligence or intel to the United States, or the United States has its own security intelligence in Nigeria. There can only be two explanations. There's no other explanation. So, so I think that uh, this already goes to tell us that the insecurity in Nigeria today has now become a commercial uh, 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 insecurity where people use it in order to create wealth, in order to sell arms, in order to create an opportunity for needs whereby you will keep having the same situation over and over. It's just like I said before, what we need in Nigeria, we do not need politics anymore. It is very obvious that for the number of years that Buhari has ruled Nigeria, the simple question is, how many of all of these political heads of parties has Buhari been able to reach consensus? Number two, how many of these armed separatist group, this bandits group that Buhari has been able to reach a consensus a consensus with they have been none like i was giving an example in central africa when the incumbent president took over power the first thing he did was to meet all the 14 heads of the rebel group and agree to share power with them 
That is why you can see that today in Central Africa, they can, you, the, the, the citizens are experiencing a certain amount of security and the nation is leaping up. Because you cannot build a nation when there is insecurity it becomes a growing concern. Security first before you develop. So this is a serious business in Nigeria where the government itself has an interest. People, individuals have an interest in it. And because of this uh, uh, suffering in Nigeria, the common people have decided to unite themselves together. The Nigerians are united. But their government is not united with its people and all the other political stakeholders and all the armed separatist group or bandits that we have. The government is not united with. So you come to realize that what we are facing as a challenge in Nigeria is at the level of leadership, a leadership which is in the interest of playing bad politics, which will never, ever be in the interest of the common people. You can explain the number of persons that we have today in Nigeria. If there are almost 200 and more million persons in Nigeria, these arm or these bandits are not up to 1 million. So are you telling me that 200 cannot consume 1 million? So you realize that we have a problem here of, of, of not having a good will and not having the, the, the zeal or the conscience or the good will to give your people the security that they deserve because politics is all about your own personal interest and not the interest of the common man. You can dispatch an helicopter for campaign, for political campaign, uh, uh, elections and votes. But you cannot dispatch an helicopter to go and pick up people that have been rescued, that have been uh, freed from the hands of these bandits. Few days ago, family members were freed from the hands of these bandits. The government has not played any role, neither to talk to the families of these individuals that have been kidnapped, to assure them that the government is engaging negotiations to release these people. The government doesn't do anything like that. And even when these people are released, the government does not even go to meet these people and find out psychologically, give them psychology, send them to therapy so that they can rebuild back their mentality and they can get back to life normally. The government has done no effort. But when it comes to election, the government is willing to dispatch all that it has in order for its own interest. And this is where I come back to say that democracy and poverty leads to insecurity. Why? Because it offers room for division where the people can never unite because they have all been identified by different groups and each of those groups is protecting their own interests. So as a leader, what we need in the coming months to vote in Nigeria as a leader is not a political head of a party. A leader who is going to come at the forefront to unite all Nigerians in order to give them a better sense of living and a better means of living and creating opportunity and job and a better economy so that people don't have reasons to pick up arms. You as a government cannot make promise like in so many with bad power. Make promises in terms of power. You are looking for another four years. You are looking for another. You create need. Do not be very surprised that such insecurities are being created even by the government because they want the people to feel that insecurity in Nigeria today has become now a growing concern where you need a military president in order to solve this insecurity problem. How many years has Buhari there? You don't need to be a military person to solve insecurity. All you just need to do is to have a good will. Like we saw in Ethiopia, when Abi Ahmed entered power, he went and made peace with the Eretia. The Americans stood behind the Tigrayans against the central government. When uh, 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 Asimi Goita took over power, he made sure that he called all other parties so that they can get into an all-inclusive dialogue. Buhari needs to get into all-inclusive dialogue with all of these bandits. The bandits, you call them bandits, are Nigerians. They have a good cause. They have a legitimate cause. We are in Africa, and we know how inse insecurities in Africa are being born. They are born out of hardship. They are born out of poverty. They are born out of lack of e economy, bad economy, lack of jobs. I mean, health system, you don't get nothing. So the people are left with no choice than to make insecurity become a business. So this is what we need in Nigeria today. We need a leader and not a politician. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ibako. Uh, now, do you think the uh, uh, insecurity in Nigeria can be contained? And where has this uh, current government uh, failed that the uh, new administration that is going to take over in, uh, after the February elections has to do uh, to uh, uh, bring uh, security back uh, to Nigeria? It is just simple. Nigeria as a nation has a lot of security experts. 
who come on TV every day, educate the government, educate the, 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 the community and the masses. So the government cannot say they, are, they have run out of ideas like they are saying that they don't know anything more to do. There are people in Nigeria with brilliant ideas to solve this problem. It's a very common problem. Nigerians have citizens that have worked with the best security systems in this world, with the British security, with the American security, with the French security. They have worked and they have experience in order to solve such kind of problem. Has Buhari ever called any of these, all of these security agents? And all of those heads of political parties where they come together and say, okay, this has nothing to do with politics. How do we do in order to engage to solve this problem as Nigerians? This, was, to, this has, was supposed to be the approach that Buhari was supposed to take. But this is not the approach that Buhari is, is taking. So that therefore means that his administration has failed to address this problem. And it's a simple problem. It's not a complicated problem because you must first have the goodwill. You must first have the spirit of all inclusiveness the spirit of unity and the spirit of working together with all other members of your nation. But as, a, as, a, as, a, as, an, as an individual as Buhari, he feels that like we can see also in a country like Nigeria, uh, like Cameroon, the government says they can handle the insecurities in, in, the, in the two regions, northwest and southwest. The armed, the armed conflict has lasted now for seven years. This is when people fail to consult those that are capable. If you know that your government is void of ideas, allow others to come in who are not partisans. We don't need leaders that are partisans. The problem we are facing that the administration of Buhari cannot address this matter is because the government is partisan. Pan-Africanism that we speak of offers us a leader who is not partisan, someone who sees all as one and who seeks the interest for everybody. This is what Nigeria needs as a solution. And you cannot tell me that Buhari has run out of such a simple idea an idea that he uses in his own family. He cannot implement the same idea in his own nation. This is what we are talking about. And that is why I say that my advice I will give to all Nigerians is to come together and understand that democracy has failed Africans. We can no longer depend on democracy and we can no longer depend on our politicians because they have failed us. They keep creating needs for us to go and vote them. They keep creating needs for us to go and find somebody who is going to solve a problem that a common man on the street can solve. Why do we vote leaders to solve problems? We should vote leaders to build a nation for development, for improvement, for unity, and not to solve insecurity. When a leader comes to solve insecurity, that simply means that that nation has not even begun a road to liberty. Such a leader we should not even have in mind to put such a one as a leader. We need to change our mentality that what we need in Africa, we don't need leaders who come to solve problems of insecurity. We need leaders who come to build Africa for Africans and offer room for all Africans to be able to have access to Africa and have a future in their own continent. These are the kind of leaders we need. We don't need partisan leaders. So the, the administration of Buhari has run out of idea as they claim, and that's why they were calling the American government to come and help them beef up the insecurity in, in Nigeria. This is unheard of. These are... Uh, uh, administrations and government that are partisan. What we are facing in Africa today as challenges is that we have partisan leaders. Leaders who don't have concern for their masses. Leaders who don't have interest for their masses. Leaders who don't seek the all-inclusiveness of the ideas and talents of their own citizens. I have watched Nigerian um, security experts. They have one of the finest in Africa. As a matter of fact, one of the finest in the world. With no exaggeration. They come on TV day in, day out, giving ideas to the government. When the government fails to admit an advice that is practical and can achieve results, it means that that government has an interest in the insecurity that you are facing today in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Atam Ibaku. Uh, now, before we get back to uh, Dr. Mumbley, uh, we just find, like to find out from you, uh, Mr. Atam Ibaku. Uh, now, uh, President Muammar Buhari mentioned uh, two weeks ago that he was going to hand over an insecurity uh, free Nigeria to the next uh, set of leaders that will be coming in after the February elections. Uh, what can you say about such a promise uh, uh, coming from a president that has been there for the uh, past uh, uh, five years or so and uh, the insecurity situation in the country keeps uh, uh, getting from better to worse? He has uh, just about uh, three more months to be in power and he's giving such an assurance to Nigerians. What can you make of such 
uh, 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 such of such a promise? Well, you see, we can only admit that at the period when we were going to vote Buhari in power, we were voting a clown. Putting a crown on the head of a clown does not make that clown a king or a ruler. For him, at a dying moment, where he has, he has outlived all his years of services in Nigeria, and is remaining three months, and he's promising Nigerians to hand over power to a free, uh, a, a, a free security Nigeria to the next power, is a preposterous lie. If you could not do it in your first year, second year, third year, fourth year, you cannot do it in three months. That is the basic truth. So this is what politics does to us. It brings us people, adult human beings, heads that are big. They cannot make good decisions. They tell lies <laughs> in a public state without fear of public recognition. How can he say that in three months when the insecurity in Nigeria has only been increasing? The kidnapping today in Nigeria has now been a breaking news every day. And Buhari, in three months, he wants to prove to us that he can perform miracle to solve this problem. This is just to tell that we have dishonest leaders. Such people, we should never put them in power. Any leader who is partisan does not worth being a president in Africa. He can be a president in America. Tell Buhari to go and be a president in, in America, not in Nigeria. What Nigeria needs, he needs a Pan-Africanist. He needs a leader who is not partisan. This is what we need today in Africa. The position where we are as Africans, we are today in Africa, we don't need democracy because we are underdeveloped and we are under construction and at the same time we are under war. We need leaders who can resist and build a community, a nation, and lift up the life standard of their people and create a vision and work with everybody. That is the kind of leader we need today in Africa. And as I stand to speak about this question that you have posed to me, um, uh, uh, Madam Florencia, I encourage all Nigerians that due to this insecurity that has brought all of them together, they should stay together and do their own future. It is a time where we should not allow 3.3% people who have no vision, who have lived their lives with no results, age with no experience. You have made many years in power and now you want to change Nigeria in three months. We need young visionaries the one we saw in Afaso, Ibrahim, like the one we saw in uh, Ethiopia, Abi Ahmed, in uh, Guinea Conakry, in Mali, we need people who can run with their vision, people who can get into the battlefield and bring security and meet all those armed separatist groups, bandits, and negotiate with them. If Buhari cannot negotiate with Nigerians and he prefers to call America to come and help them in their insecurity, it means that Buhari has a mental problem. There is something wrong with his head because you cannot tell me that I have a, my own house, able to solve that problem. I go to bring somebody outside that I'm even older than that person and experienced in my country than that person to solve my own problem. Such person can, should have never been a president in Nigeria. Nigerians made a very big and huge mistake to have ever voted Buhari to power, and this is the damage of democracy. We only keep voting dictators, criminals, clowns take a person from a minority group and you put him to manage 200 and something million people both home and abroad and deal uh, with their man who has no end how many battles have won in nigeria frank as africans that a time has come in africa where we as the african people we are going to determine who is going to be the next leader in nigeria and in the rest of africa we are done with this issue of democracy and bad politics that we have been seeing today, having the West external dynamics, internal dynamics, and at the end of the day, it is the common Africans that are suffering. Due to this suffering, it has shown that we have a common problem. And on the basis of this common problem, it has brought us together to unify our own service, to start building bottom to this issue where we begin to have ghosts. People who have no experience, we don't even know them. They have never solved problems in a nation. And we take them and put them in a, a, a position of, of leadership where we know people, experts who are in Nigeria. You take any of those experts and you put them in power, they solve the problem. All right. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Atem Ebako. Uh, thank you.
Now, let's come back to you, uh, Dr. Uh, Mobley. Uh, now, uh, where we let's take a look at the uh, country's uh, uh, security uh, services and uh, what they can offer. Uh, now, let's go back to what happened in July. In July, about 400 uh, prisoners uh, went missing after a prison break uh, in, uh, uh, in in in. In Kujé, Kujé is a town not very far from the capital, and uh, it said it, 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 in that attack or in that uh, prison break, uh, Islamist militants uh, uh, claimed responsibility. And at the time, uh, at the time, the defense minister of the country uh, uh, told reporters that 64 jih uh, jihadists uh, had escaped from the prison. So. How is it possible that uh, a prison that uh, is not very far from the capital, which is supposed to have uh, maximum security, we have prisoners escaping? And what is it, in your opinion, what is it that this current administration has failed in, uh, especially when it comes to uh, handling the security situation in the country, that uh, the, uh, current the current administration should lay its hands on to make a Nigeria a better place, to make a Nigeria a free state, free of all the insecurities that that uh, it is currently facing? Well, unfortunately, uh, Nigeria has never been a free state, uh, hasn't been at least for a long time, certainly since independence um, uh, supposedly took place in the early 60s. Uh, Nigeria has always been under uh, quasi-Western uh, control, mostly through Britain, course, and then uh, the United States supports whatever Britain does uh, in Africa in their efforts to maintain control. It's not so much that uh, these European countries, Western countries, are trying to uh, create uh, opportunities of independence in Africa. They, that's not what they're doing. What they're doing is they're reshaping their control devices over African countries. So it's a, it's a sleight of hand. The African people are essentially uh, given limited operative movement to, to create uh, uh, what appears to be a democracy, but it's not democracy. It's really just moving around the deck chairs on the Titanic or playing musical chairs, so to speak, and uh, nothing changes. It's just the position of the chairs uh, on the floor. So we need to understand that. And we need to break this system of dominance over Africa. Africans are grown, adult, strong people who have the uh, capability and the capacity to make decisions for themselves and run their own affairs and run their own states, uh, so to speak, that we can run the entire continent of Africa. We prove this over and over again by what we do as a people around the world. But getting back to your point about the uh, prison break and uh, what is going on uh, under the auspices of jihadists and uh, these uh, alleged gangs and militants, uh, it is all window dressing. It is all a facade. It is all to create dis destabilization. Once you create destabilization, you automatically say, well, someone has to come in and solve this dis uh, you know, destabilization. Someone has to create stability once again. Who is going to be called to come in and create that stability? U.S. forces, U.N. forces, British forces, combinations of those things. That is the challenge. Right before an election, it would be ideal for the West to create a destabilization event in, in Nigeria, bring in those forces, and then control the next election. That is what this is about. But again, this is not new. They've done the same thing. It's standard operating procedure over and over again throughout Africa. This is how they continue to create that control. So until Africans create their own security apparatus there across the continent and create their own internal ability, whether it's the AU forces, if they ever mature to a point where they could carry out that function 
or if it is some new pan-African developmental function, that is what needs to occur so that Africans can police their own elections, they can create their own stability, they can take care of those, uh, you know, sort out who is actually a terrorist, who is a jihadist, who is a freedom fighter, and how those things uh, it culminate in, a, uh, in, in an effort to uh, create an Africa that we can all look forward to, uh, to, to surviving in and developing fully with our uh, massive human and global uh, Pan-African potential. So we, we want to get there, but these things are standing in the way and we have to, uh, have to definitely look beyond uh, politics and states and sham democracy and uh, the nonsense that's put in front of us uh, to just further create uh, destabilization efforts and opportunities for uh, those people who have, who have uh, continued to colonize Africa or, can, or want to continue to colonize Africa going forward. Thank you uh, again, okay. Florencia. Okay, be just before you go, uh, Dr. Mobley, uh, what do you think are some of the strategies that these African states can uh, put in place? Uh, because we have, uh, we have uh, uh, made that observation that most of these Western states want to continue to have uh, uh, influence over the African continent. Uh, so what are some of the strategies that these African states can put in place to weave up this influence that the West continues to try to implant on the continent? Absolutely. And I think what uh, Adrian Abaco uh, mentioned earlier about unity and Pan-Africanism, that is core. That is what uh, we have been trying to seek and to achieve in Africa for many, many years, going back to uh, the independence movements that uh, attempted to, to, to shake loose uh, the colonial hands from uh, their grips on Africa. Uh, that effort continues, that uh, struggle continues. We have to continue to push to try and create genuine independence in Africa. And we have to support genuine independence when we see it, when we see it happening in Ethiopia and we see it happening in Mali and Zimbabwe and Central African Republic. We have to, as a Pan-African uh, force, around the world support those efforts. We have to say something about what is happening and put unified pressure on these, uh, on these uh, states where these challenges take place. And that's how we mitigate a lot of what the uh, perpetrators of this, this, this destabilization are trying to do. We can thwart them if we act in a unified manner. We have to at least, at a minimum, speak up and say, we see what you're doing, we recognize what you're doing, we challenge what you're doing, and we want other African people to pay attention to that and come in and reshape what's going on in that particular state. Nigeria must be controlled by African people. When peace comes to Nigeria, we'll have peace across the continent. That will be the beginning, the linchpin uh, for peace across the continent. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mobley. We have uh, a few more minutes to be together. Uh, the, Mr. Atam Ebako, uh, now we, you mentioned earlier on that uh, Africa does not need uh, partisan leaders. Africa needs uh, leaders that uh, can stand for the people, leaders that have the people's uh, 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 will the people's aspirations at heart. So how can the continent go about uh, getting such leaders? Uh, what, how do we uh, 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 have such leaders to take over the reins of the continent? Well, I think that uh, the season and the era that we have gotten into Africa as we speak right now, it is clear that the youth of Africa are assuming their responsibility and they are taking steps further in all sides the motion of Africa. They have seen that in different parts of Africa that the youth have not let their mother and fight for 
a unified Africa and for an Africa which is free of colonialism. So I think that this new era that we have moved in, we need to depend more on ourselves to become the solution to the problems that we are facing in Africa. There are two, point, there are two uh, things that we are facing in Africa. We have things which are meant by the colonialists and only be the solution to problem. And when this awareness is created in the minds of all Africa, we are able to change Africa and build a new Africa for all Africa. It's simple. When a unified people choose a leader, the leader is always dedicated to the people. That is how it is. All effective leadership only comes from true, true unity. It is almost impossible for you to be a leader when you have a mixed population and a divided people. It's almost impossible. Which is why when you come to a country like Central Africa, the, the, the people who are guarding the president are not the natives from that country. Because the country is in a state of poverty in which whereby the citizens there will need some time in order to see by example what the leader is doing in order for them to start giving him their support. So this issue and idea of all-inclusive dialogue is the only way for us to start having the right leaders that we need in Africa. To say that when a leader gets to power, the first thing he needs to do is to harmonize all the other stakeholders. If they are armed separatist fighters, if they are bandits, you call them to the table because we need to share power as Africans. This is the core of the problem. Power is not being shared. And when power is not being shared, some other people are left out of their own rights. And this is what gives security. An African is one who shares power to all Africans. And that is why I say a leader who is not partisan. One who has the interest of all. And that is why we keep saying, and I still go back to say, back in the days of Marcos Garvey, these are the examples of leaders that the nation of Africa must follow. Leaders who move from one place to another in order to uni unify their people and lead them into a place of greener pasture and a place of safety and a place of security and a land which flows with milk and honey and a possibility for them to develop themselves and make a better life for themselves in their own continent where Africans do not need to travel. The kind of leaders that Africa needs, we have seen them in our past. The Pan-Africanists from the diaspora who brought Pan-Africanism to Africa. Today, we, the young generation of Africa, we are responding to the call of the ancient Pan-Africanists and we are holding the mandate to change Africa. We are not going to negotiate with any leader such as Buhari, Nana, Ado, keep naming them. We will not negotiate with them. The youths of Africa are stepping up the game and they are uniting themselves in order to determine their own future. Like we saw in Mali, they did so well. Like we saw in uh, Ethiopia, they did so well. In Guinea Conakry, in Burkina Faso, in Central Africa. And so we will continue in order to empower our youth, provide them with the right kind of knowledge that violence cannot be paid by violence. But we can unite ourselves, become the greatest weapon that Africans will ever need in order to liberate Africa. As long as Africa is in this divided state, the West will always have an upper edge in order to make their lives better at the detriment of the African people. So we have understood that the West, it is what it is because of Africa. And so we are closing up the gap and we are stepping up our game in order to change the narrative to understand that the solution for Africa can only come from Africans. And that is what we are doing right now. So my word to all Africans is that we are coming together in order to build a new Africa because our generation will never miss this revolution. Africa is ripe for change and Africans are ready to take the change and take power back into their hands and give it to somebody who is going to respect and is going to share power so that everybody can live well and we can live in a free security Africa where we do not have all this issue of gun smoking here left and right and having liars with very expensive elections, a very expensive campaign, spending money. But when people are kids, family members are kidnapped, you can, a government cannot even talk to those families. The government cannot even go and negotiate the release of its own citizens. This is pure wickedness. You cannot tell me that Buhari claimed to say that his country has run out of ideas. It is a purposeless lie, and that is a lie from a criminal and from a bandit himself, somebody who comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. He did not come for the interest of the African people. So my advice to all Nigeria is that let's 
use Buhari example that politics has never worked on Nigeria. We don't need politicians. They are expensive, spending money for nothing. Why do we need politicians? We need individuals who have goodwill. For you to be a head of your family, a head of an organization, you don't need to be a politician. You don't need to study political science. All you need to know is the demands of your people, the demands of the society, the demands of your organization and your family, and supply the needs. A good man will leave an inheritance for his children's children. What is Buhari living today in Nigeria? Insecurity, debts, poverty, a, 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 a lack of job, lack of medical care. When he himself falls sick, he flies to UK for treatment where there are over 45, uh, 445,000 Nigerian practitioners who are practicing medicine in Nigeria. Why would you not resource and build facility for your people? This is what politics does to us in Africa. We do not need politics. Africa is our motherland, and we are taking Africa because Africa belongs to all Africans, and we want to share power, and that is why we are stepping up the game. So all such leaders like Buhari, Nana Ado, who will go and lay sanctions in Mali, who will go and lay sanctions in Burkina Faso, in Guinea Conakry, we do not want such leaders who are against the will of their own ancestors and their own founding father. Such leaders are a disgrace to Africa. And any African who ever votes such leader means that such an African has not yet gotten the vision of what we need today to do in Africa. And that is why we are taking the liberty to push our campaign on the media, on the social media, to rally up Africans, both home and in the, in the global diaspora, to come back to Africa in their mind, so to change Africa, a spiritual atmosphere, form of a unified a body in order to address the issues that we are facing today in Africa to be the solution to the African problem. We cannot depend on the West anymore. The West does not have the value that Africa has. We should be able to determine our own economy. We should be able to determine our own currency. We should be able to determine our own market. We should be able to rule the world because what makes currency is value. Africa has all what it needs. That's why Russia is here. That's why China is here. That's why America is in union. It's all in Africa. Why? They are coming for value, which we have. All Africans need at this moment is the, is the, is the, is the how do I call it, the, the doctrine and the ideology of Pan-Africanism. We will solve the problems that we are going through. We can Thank take so care much, of Mr. ourselves. Abiko. Africa is of age. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ebako. Uh, Nigerians uh, need to stay alert uh, with this uh, latest uh, information coming in that uh, uh, the uh, country uh, or the capital uh, will uh, see a terrorist attack uh, in the days ahead uh, coming from the United States of America and Africa as a whole uh, needs to be united to be able to take the continent out of the hands of uh, Western influence. Africans have to push their own agenda uh, forward. Africans have to be there for themselves. Uh, there is no one who is going to come and fight their battle for them. Uh, tell the viewers, it is on that note that we draw the curtains on this edition of the program. Uh, we thank all those who took out time to be with us. Uh, Another edition comes up tomorrow at uh, the same time. Uh, uh, just to remind our televiewers that uh, we had uh, two uh, important uh, resource persons with us this day uh, who dwelt on the topic in the presence of Mr. Andrew Natame Bako, uh, a Pan-Africanist and a political analyst, as well as uh, uh, Dr. Arthur Mobley, a Pan-African political and media analyst. Uh, thank you so much, uh, sirs, uh, for taking out time to be with us. Uh, do not miss out tomorrow. Do join uh, Beat Ben Luis uh, for another interesting edition of the program, uh, 14 hours. As GMT uh, do take the rendezvous uh, until then, you have a wonderful uh, day in the company of more of our transmissions. Afrique Media, le monde, c'est nous.